Hello and welcome everybody to my channel Lomini Bio Entrance and today we will be discussing University of Hyderabad PhD Entrance Examination Question Paper for the subject Biochemistry conducted in the year 2023. I have also uploaded previous year question papers of PhD Entrance Examination for Biochemistry as well as Biotechnology. You can go through my channel playlist for the same. If you are new to my channel, please do like, share and subscribe. Coming to the first question, which of the following mechanisms prevail in the evolution of prokaryotes? So it is horizontal gene transfer that is prevailing. What is horizontal gene transfer? It is the uh, movement of genetic information between organism and in prokaryotes there are three types that is conjugation, transformation and transduction. So evolution of prokaryotes is through horizontal gene transfer. Now gestational diabetes could be due to. Now gestational diabetes, diabetes mellitus is a condition in which hormone made by the placenta prevent the body from using insulin effectively. So glucose, what will happen? Glucose build up in the body instead of being absorbed by the cells. And some of the hormones like estrogen, cortisol and human placental lactogen can have blocking effect on the insulin. So here in the option, estrogen and cortisol are not given, but high placental lactogen is given. So gestational life diabetes could be due to high placental lactogen secretion. Answer is option C. Then next one. In the probe preparation using random primers, oligonucleotides of six base pairs are used. Calculate the number of possible random combinations if only A, G and C nucleotides are included. So, three nucleotides are included. So, three raised to six, that will be 729. So, the answer here is option A. Then next one. The pH of a solution of 0.01 normal for NaOH at 25 degrees Celsius is... So the given concentration of NaOH is 0.01. NaOH dissociates into Na plus and OH minus ion because it is a strong base. So the concentration of OH minus will be 0.01 molar. So pOH will be the minus low concentration of OH. So it is 2. Now pH will be 14 minus pOH. Why pH is equal? pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So, pH is equal to 14 minus pH, so it will be 12. The answer here is option C, that is 12. Then next one. All statements given below exemplify phenotypic plasticity except. Now, what is phenotypic plasticity? That is there in the options itself. If you see option B, it is the definition for phenotypic plasticity. What is the what what is it that is said there is some of the changes in an organism's behavior, morphology, and physiology in response to unique environment. That is phenotypic plasticity. It affects the phenotype, not the genotype. So we will see the options. Option A: adaptive mechanism displayed by cancer cell in response to hypoxic stress that is an example of phenotypic plasticity so a is correct b is also correct then c genotype of organism remain the same but phenotype is altered i already told you that it doesn't affect the genotype it affects only the phenotype so c is also correct then d altered gene expression due to mutations in an organism d is not correct because it doesn't affect the genotype so D is the one which is not an phenotypic plasticity condition. Then next one. Which of the following is the most suitable representation of feed forward regulation of hormone action? So in feed forward condition what will happen is the system will anticipate and bring about a change even before the original variable is changed. That is, examples I can tell you is that the thought of or uh, smell of the food will induce gastric secretion. That is anticipatory. You don't know whether you will get the food in your hand. 
but before that gastric secretion started thinking that food is been already eaten so that is an example of uh, feed forward regulation now from here if you see option c x give rise to y y giving rise to z but x is having a anticipatory action on z so x is thinking that z will uh, even before uh, the action even before food is been taken in z is been secreted by the gastric secretion so answer here is option c that is c uh, x giving y giving z and z this been controlled by x then next one which of the following peptides will display the slowest migration through a column filled with strong cation exchange resin now cation exchange columns have negatively charged groups bound to the resin so peptides which have highest proportion of positively charged side chains will migrate slowest through the cation exchange resin and this is a strong cation exchange resin so naturally the one with larger number of positively charged amino acids so if you see option a lysinyl arginine they arginyl they both are positively charged amino acid whereas glutamic acid in option b aspartic acid in option c are negatively charged so the alanine glycine all these are uncharged also so maximum number of positive charged amino acids occur in option a lysine and arginine so the answer here is option a which of the electron transport chain complex is involved in the moving of electrons from a lipid soluble electron carrier to a water soluble mobile electron carrier here the lipid soluble electron carrier is your ubiquinone and water soluble electron carrier is cytochrome c so you have to see the in the electron transport chain com, uh, which electron which of the electron transport chain complex is involved in moving of electrons from ubiquinone to cytochrome c and the answer here is option c that is complex Three is involved. Answer is option eight. Then next one, which is the most negative standard redox potential component found in nature? It is photosystem one. Answer is B. Then next one, the population of rabbits in a forest is one lakh twenty five thousand. If the annual birth rate is 3.3% and the annual death rate is 1.3%, calculate the population after 3 years. So annual birth rate and annual death rate they have given. Annual net growth rate of the population is 3.3 minus 1.3 that is 2%. Current population is 125,000 so after 3 years population will be 125,000 into 1 plus 2 by 100. Raised to three. If you solve for that, you will get answer as in option A. Then next one. Which of the following can be correct correspondence between PAM and blossom matrices? so the blossom matrices with low numbers correspond to pam matrices with higher numbers so here option a pam is with higher number blossom is with lower number so answer is option a then next one complete hydrolysis of a uh, glycerophospholipid yield glycerol palmitic uh, palmitic acid oleic acid and phosphoric acid in the molar ratio 2 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 the lipid that has hyd that was hydrolyzed was so the answer here is phosphatidyl glycerol so phosphatidyl glycerol if you hydrolyze you will get glycerol palmitic acid oleic acid and phosphoric acid in the ratio 2 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 
then next one which of the following statements are true about bilirubin bilirubin is a waste product that originates from the breakdown of hemoglobin that is correct so first one is correct bilirubin is conjugated with glucuronic acid yes to form bilirubin glucuronide that is also correct which is insoluble in water it is soluble in water so two is not correct unconjugated bilirubin is also known as indirect bilirubin that is also correct bilirubin is majorly excreted through stool and only some fraction of bilirubin is excreted through urine that is also correct so 1 3 and 4 are correct so the answer is option c the next question the following synthetic templates in 1 and 2 are translated in a cell free translation system how many polypeptides are synthesized from these two templates so this is your template 1 so uh, cell free translation system means you can have any reading frame so first a c a c a c a c a c a c a c a that will be your first protein then next if you start from uh, nucleotide c c a c a c a c a c a c a sequence is different protein sequence is different first it was a c a c a c next it was c a c ACA. So protein sequence is different. So two polypeptides are formed. Again, if you start from this third nucleotide, ACA, ACA, CAC, ACA, CAC. That is just similar to your first one. So third one we are not taking into consideration. So two polypeptides from template one. Now if you see template two. okay in template 2 uh, aca ua it will stop over there so only one amino acid has been incorporated so that is not taken into consideration you need peptides so it will stop there the next it will start from second nucleotide acu aac uaa that is one polypeptide so that will be taken then next you will start from c c u a a c u a a c u a a so that is your second polypeptide uh, it is not a quite a short peptide so okay it is not polypeptide you, are, you cannot sequence the whole thing because of the presence of stop code on u a a no, so two small peptides from template two will be the ans uh, answer so option c is your answer that is two polypeptides from template 1 and two short peptides from template 2 by my mistake i have uh, done the tra transcription and translation over here also but it is not needed because here ua is a stop codon and it will stop there it will not continue the synthesis So only two poly, uh, two short peptides from template two are obtained. The next one, statistically, how many times a random five base pair DNA sequence would appear in a bacterial genome having a total of one point zero two four into ten raised to six base pairs? assume random distribution of the dna bases across the genome now suppose the random five base pair dna sequence is atgct now probability that a will appear at the first position is 1 by 4 t will appear at the second position is 1 by 4 4 is there are four nucleotide bases G it G will appear at the third position is one by four. C will appear at the fourth position is one by four. 
t will appear at the fifth position is again 1 by 4 now multiply all the probabilities you will get 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 into 1 by 4 that is 1 1 by 1024 <coughs> sorry now they have asked how many times the sequence will appear in a bacterial genome of 1.024 into 10 raised to 6 base pair. So divide the sequence of the bacterial genome by this probability, random probability, 1024. That will be 1000 times. So the answer is option D. Then next one. The K-cat and K-M of a wild type enzyme towards a reaction are found to be 0.37 and 3.4 millimolar. A mutant of this enzyme towards the same reaction has shown K-cat and K-M of 1.1 and 0.7 millimolar respectively. Calculate the approximate fold increase in catalytic efficiency by the mutant than the wild type. So, how is catalytic efficiency calculated? It is K cat by Km. So, catalytic efficiency of wild type will be 0.108 and mutant will be 1.571. Now, fold increase in the catalytic efficiency by the mutant than the wild type will be 1.571 divided by 0.108. So, it will be 14. Answer is option A. Then next one. Given below are statements on sarcomere contraction. So before that, a sarcomere extends between two dark lines called Z lines. So this is your sarcomere. It extends between two Z lines and it is called as a sarcomere and contain two type of my my my. Uh, myofilaments that is uh, myosin and the actin filaments. Now the I band it is light color because it contains only active filaments attached to the Z line then dark regions of the A band that is over here they have overlapping actin and myosin filaments and Z zone has only myosin filaments. When the sarcomere shortens, the actin as filaments slide past the myosin filament as in this figure. The actin filaments slide past the myosin filaments and approach one another. Now what will happen because of that? The I band shorten. That is over here. The I band shorten and the H zone also shortens. See here the difference you can see in the picture. H zone also shortens. I band also shortens. But the filaments they won't shorten. They remain the same length. Now read the statements. Sarcomere shortens during contraction as myosin filaments come together. Identify the options that has all correct statements. Uh, it is not the myosin filament. Uh, it is the sarcomere shortens. The actin filament slide past the myosin filament. So first statement is not correct. Then sarcomere shortens due to contraction as actin filaments come together. That is more correct. See in the picture the actin filaments are coming closer to each other. That is why the sarcomere shortens. Answer uh, 2 is right answer. A band remains unchanged while the I band get shortened. That is also not correct. A band remains constant while both H zone and I band shorten. That is correct. That I already explained. So, 2 and 4 are correct. Answer is option D. Then next one. 
Proteins are targeted to specific organelles due to the presence of sorting signals. Yes. And follow different mechanism to enter organelles. Of course, they have their own uh, localization signals. Researchers isolated proteins from different organelles and added them to in vitro transport assay systems that are fully competent to carry out import. Which one of the following option has the correct combination of organelles that would be competent to import the isolated proteins? So they have asked for import of isolated proteins. So it is peroxisomes and nucleus. Answer is option C. Then next one. Given below are few components that can affect the mitochondrial electron transport chain function. Valinomycin, nigrosine, rotinone, oligomycin. Choose the option that has the correct combination of components that will completely destroy electrochemical potential across inner membrane of mitochondria. So here, valino, valinomycin and nigrosine are the answers. One and two only. Because rotinone and oligomycin. Rotinone, they prevent electron transfer from iron sulfur center to ubiquinone. And oligomycin inhibits F0 of the ATP synthase. So they are involved in completely destroying electrochemical potential across inner membrane of mitochondria. Whereas, 1 and 2 are directly involved. So the answer here is valinomycin and nigrosine. The next one. When a male and female with genotype, they have given there. I am not reading capital A, cap small a, like that you can see it. Are crossed. What proportion of the progeny are likely to be of this nature? Of the given genotype. So here this is crossed with this, with this or I can say this is crossed with the same genotype or they are self. So you will, you have to get a progeny that is with this combination for the genotype. Now what is the, pro when A and capital A small a, capital A small a from these two parents cross, what is the probability that you get capital A small a genotype as given in the progeny? So it will be 2 by 4 that is half. Similarly, what is the probability that you get capital B small b genotype as given in the progeny? It is half. Then what is the probability that you get small c small c in the genotype? So it is 1 by 4. And what is the probability that you get capital D small d genotype is half. So the probability that uh, you get this particular genotypic combination in the genotype is for capital A small a it is half, capital B small b it is half, small c small c is 1 by 4 and capital D small d is half. So all together you will get it as 1 by 32. So the answer here is option B 1 by 32. Then next one, if there is a mutation in the PL promoter in the lambda genome, which of the following proteins will still be synthesized in a bacterial infected with lambda phage? So if you see the diagram over here, you can see that the lambda genome, it has got um, PL promoter, PRM, PR promoter. Then one more is over here, PR dash promoter. So first once the it is infected the early genes will be transcribed and translated. So the first what will happen is um, the E. coli RNA polymerase interacts with the PL promoter and it will produce mRNA that will give rise to the protein N in this direction. Next, the E. coli RNA polymerase interact with the PR promoter and it will give rise to mRNA which is responsible for the production of the crow protein. So these are the early genes that are synthesized first. Now N is an anti-terminator and N will result in the synthesis of 
C2, O, P and Q because it will pass through TR1 terminator and result in the synthesis of O, P and Q proteins. Similarly, N will also, the PL promoter will also result in the synthesis of C3, um protein now the question is they have asked what will happen if there is a mutation in the pl promoter so this is the pl promoter now mutation in the pl promoter will result in n being not synthesized now once n is not synthesized c o p q proteins and c2 will not be synthesized but Pro will be there because uh, it is it is being synthesized from the PR promoter. So pro will be there. Pro production will be there and it is not dependent on N for its synthesis. So 20, uh, for 26 the answer is only pro proteins will be synthesized. Answer is option A. Then next one, the following four statements were made about the SOS response in E. coli. Statement 1, it is mutagenic. SOS response is error prone mechanism, so it is mutagenic. It is inducible, yes, it is inducible because it is induced by DNA damage. Then next one, the strand invasion activity of RECK protein is crucial for SOS response. There is no stand in strand invasion activity for RECK. So that is not correct. So one is correct to statement two is correct, statement three is wrong and statement four. The proteolytic activity of RECK protein, yes, the RECK protein will cause proteolysis of the LEXA. So, is crucial for SOS response. That is also correct. So, the only statement that is correct are 1, 2 and 4 are correct. So, the answer here is option C. Then next one. Signal recognition particle. Now, what is that? In eukaryotes, signal recognition particle, it binds to uh, signal sequence of, of the uh, newly synthesized peptide as it emerges from the uh, ribosome on endoplasmic reticulum. Now what will happen as a result of this binding is that it will result in what is called as elongation arrest. That is slowing down of protein synthesis once SRP binds or signal recognition particle binds. Now what will signal recognition particle do next is that it will target this entire complex that is the ribosome and the <coughs> polypeptide chain to the protein conducting channel of the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. So, <coughs> we will see the options. Now, promote synthesis of proteins. It doesn't promote synthesis of protein. It slows down the uh, protein synthesis resulting in elongation arrest. So, it inhibits, I can say, the protein synthesis. Again, B also promotes synthesis of protein. That is also not correct. Inhibit synthesis of proteins made in cytosol by inhibiting the initiation. They are not made in cytosol. They are made in the, on the ribosomes present on the endoplasmic reticulum. So option D, if you see, inhibit synthesis of proteins made on the surface of endoplasmic reticulum by blocking elongation step. So the answer here is option D. Coming to the next question. Which eukaryotic initiation factors EIF4F complex bound with 5' mRNA interacts with the 43S complex on one side and poly A binding protein bound to 3' mRNA? So if you see the figure, this is your EIF4F complex. This is your 43S initiation complex and they have asked the question uh, which initiation factor in the EIF4 complex 
will bind to the 43S complex as well as to the uh, poly A binding protein in the mRNA. So here if you see the EIF4F complex, it has got three other initiation factors that is EIF4E uh, that is the cap binding protein. It is bound to the cap on mRNA chain. Uh, mRNA tran uh, transcript then uh, there is the EIF4A which is a uh, ATP dependent RNA helicase and EIF4G which is bound to the poly A uh, binding protein as well as to the 43S complex that is it is bound to the 43S complex to the EIF3 so as per the question which initiation factor in the EIF4 complex binds to 43S complex on one side and the poly A binding protein on the other side is EIF4G. So the answer here is option uh, B, EIF4G. Then next one, how many GTPs are hydrolyzed during the initiation of eukaryotic protein synthesis? It is 2. In a dihybrid or trihybrid cross, most frequently observed offsprings are from gametes that underwent no crossing over. And that is your parental gametes. So answer is option C. Then alkaline lysis method of plasmid isolation is based on. So the principle behind alkaline lysis method. So what you first do is you will pellet out the E. coli and you suspend it into a solvent that is Tris and EDTA. Then you add the alkaline solution. Alkaline solution is of NaOH and SDS. Now alkaline solution once you add to the um, E. coli pellet what will happen is the proteins are denatured. The DNA double strand structure is also denatured that is your chromosomal DNA and your plasmid DNA both get denatured. Now after incubation in this alkaline solution, what you do is you add high salt buffer. This is to reduce alkalinity. And what will happen? Those proteins which have denatured and the chromosomal DNA that has denatured will not come back to the original form. But your plasmid DNA because of its smaller size and super coiling uh, struct, super coiled structure, it will uh, renature very fast. So later when you <coughs> centrifuge you will get your plasmid DNA separated from the other cellular components as well as from your DNA and protein. So easier renaturation of small sized plasmids compared to irreversible denaturation of large sized genomic DNA. That is your answer. Now B, if you see easier renaturation of large size genomic DNA, no. Genomic DNA doesn't renature very fast. Then difference in the pH of plasmids and genomic DNA, that is also not correct. D difference in the sequence of that is also not correct. So the answer is option A. Then next one. The Bradford's reagent used for protein estimation primarily binds to. So it binds to lysine, arginine, histidine residues of the protein. Answer is option D. Select the option that represent the correct matches between group 1 and group 2 given below. So group 1, RNAs P. RNAs P is a ribosine. So P3. So option B and D could be eliminated. We have to see for A and C. Then RNA search, RNA search, it is for DNA RNA hybrid removal. So Q4, so answer is option A, but we will see the others also. SNRNAs, SNRNAs is for splicing and the CSTF is involved in polyadenylation. It is not directly involved in polyadenylation, but as per the option, it is polyadenylation. S1. So P3, Q4, R2, S1 is the answer. Then next one. 
which of the following enzyme mechanism does not involve covalent catalysis so hiv protease is the answer it doesn't involve covalent catalysis in its enzyme action or enzyme mechanism now which kind of enzyme inhibition can have km unaltered so it is your non competitive inhibition because it binds to a region that is different from the substrate binding site then next one which of the following statements about skin grafts between different strains of mouse is correct if you see option b skin graft from strain a mouse to strain b if get rejected in 15 days a second graft on the same mouse from strain a will show hyper acute rejection within 2 days that is the answer answer is option b then next one select the statement that is incorrect for complementarity determining regions of antibody so if you see the picture this is your complementarity determining region uh and it is the antigen binding site and it is made up of both heavy and light chains so cdrs determine antibody specificity is correct then cdrs in part denote junctional diversity of vdj segments that is also correct immunoglobulin class switching can change cdrs of an antibody that is not correct because during class switching the constant region of the antibody heavy chain is changed but the variable region of the heavy chain stays the same so class switching doesn't change the cdrs of an antibody its cdr is made of both heavy and light chains so class switching is for heavy chains and not for light chains so it doesn't change the cdrs of an antibody then cdrs in part represent regions undergone somatic hypermutation that is also correct so the answer here is option c they have asked for the incorrect statement so answer is option c then next one for an enzyme following michaelis menten kinetics if km is 5 millimolar and v0 is 12.5 micromoles per ml s, s what is the vmax in micromole per ml s when concentration of s is 5 millimolar so they have given km s v0 we have to find vmax we know the michaelis menten equation vmax v0 is equal to vmax concentration of s by km plus concentration of s substitute the values and you will get the value of vmax as option a answer here is option a then backbone of a protein is constituted by so backbone of a protein it is having if you see the peptide uh, structure the conh bonds uh, you can see that the phi psi and omega are the torsion angles that make up the backbone of a protein so the answer here is option b then next one the two most popular techniques x ray crystallography and nmr are used to determine the macromolecular structure at the atomic level okay the analysis of x ray diffraction data and 2d mr nmr data yield respectively so x ray diffraction will yield an electron density map and uh, nmr will uh, yield a table of interatomic distances answer is option c then oleic acid is an it is an omega 9 fatty acid answer is option c essential fatty acids are they are linoleic acid and linolenic acid answer is option c then a substance of molecular weight 423 dalton is dissolved in water and made a final concentration of 32 micrograms per ml the solution of the substance shows an absorption of 0.27 at 540 nanometers when measured in a cuvette with a 
1 cm light path. The molar absorption coefficient of the substance at 540 nm is. So, they have asked for molar absorption coefficient and it is Beer Lambert law. So, A is equal to epsilon Cl where epsilon is the molar absorption coefficient. So, epsilon is equal to A by Cl. Now, they have given the concentration as microgram per ml. You have to convert it into micromolar first. So, for conversion, uh, you need molecular weight in kilodaltons. So, they have given the molecular weight as 1 as in, in uh, Daltons. So, 1 Dalton is 0 0.01 kilo Dalton. So, 423 Daltons will be multiplied by 423. <coughs> now, 32 microgram per ml into micromolar is equal to 423 into 0 0.01 kilo Daltons. So, micromolar will become 75 micromolar now 75 micromolar you have to convert it into molar because that is the unit for concentration so that will be 75 into 10 raised to minus 6 molar now substitute the values in this that is absorbance they have given as 0.27 concentration you got as 75 into 10 raised to minus 6 and path length is 1 substitute the values you will get 3600 which is approximately 3,552 as per the option. So, answer is option B. Then, next one. The direct products of oxidation of a fully saturated straight chain fatty acid of 30 carbons. So, you will get 5 molecules of acetyl-CoA, 1 molecule of propanoyl-CoA. Answer is option D, that is 5. No, sorry, option D. Then typhoid is confirmed by which of the following test? It is Vidal test. Answer is option C. Then the Na positive K plus ATPase pump maintains the membrane potential in cells by pumping. By pumping Na plus K positive in opposite direction each against the concentration gradient. Answer is option B. Now, which of the following mechanism helps to maintain ATP levels in a rigorously contracting muscle? So, it is creatinine phosphate that is present in the muscle cells donate phosphate to ADP to replenish ATP levels. Answer is option A. These are all just direct questions. That's why I am not explaining much. The human pancreas comprises of small cluster of specialized cells that make up the endocrine part of a gland called islets of Langerhans. Option C. Then, in mammalian cells that have just crossed the restriction point, you are likely to find. So, restriction point is also known as G1 checkpoint. Now, in when the cell is in G1 checkpoint, the retinoblastoma or the RB a protein, it is dephosphorylated and it binds to transcription factor called as the E2F. Now what happens as a result of that, when uh, RB or retinoblastoma is bound to E2F, production of protein necessary for the G1S transition is blocked. Now what will happen as a uh, next the cell will increase in size and RB is slowly phosphorylated and it becomes inactive. So, RB is released from the E2F which now can uh, turn the genes on that produces the transition proteins. So, mammalian cells that have just crossed the restriction point you will find highly phosphorylated retinoblastoma protein. Answer is option A. Then next one, a male who has N disease, which is homozygous recessive trait, so I have written it as small n, small n, is married to a female who is heterozygous for the same trait, that is capital N, small n, that is heterozygous condition. What are the chances for this couple to have a child without the disease? So when you cross this, you will get capital N small n and small n small n. So, 50% chances are there that the child is without the disease. So, the answer is option C.
then which of the following is not a phylogenetic tree building tool so it is archaeopteryx all the others are phylogenetic tree building tools so archaeopteryx is not an example then a yeast cell has been chemically treated to create a cell devoid of all mitochondrial dna which of the following will be the likely outcome so here you all know that oxygen is necessary for oxidative phosphorylation step and atp synthesis so here in what will happen is that the cell will not have any means of making atp but may survive on external atp that is not correct answer oxygen consumption of the cell will be severely reduced to zero that is the answer oxygen consumption will not take place my gosh mitochondria is not there there is no terminal electron acceptor that is oxygen that is so oxygen consumption will be reduced to zero then next one a process is endothermic in nature and is energetically favorable which one of the following options are correct so they have given the process is endothermic that means delta h is positive so delta h is positive and it is energetically favorable so delta g is negative so that uh, you can see in option c delta h is positive and delta g is negative so delta s would be naturally positive so the answer here is option c then next one which of the following is likely to be correct for a fluorescent dye used to stain cell nucleus for fluorescence microscopy dye has high fluorescence in water if that is the case then the whole thing will be fluorescing you will not be able to distinguish your rna dna or your nucleus and in all cellular environments and when bound to rna and dna so you will not be able to distinguish so a is not correct dye is non fluorescent but gives great contrast in electron microscopy that is also not correct dye is non fluorescent in water yes that is correct but has high fluorescence when bound to lipids and protein it is not to, to lipid and protein you have to bind because you have you will not distinguish it as nucleus because lipids and proteins are present in other cell organelles like mitochondria also you have lipids and protein chloroplast also you have lipids and proteins on their cell membrane so you cannot distinguish now you have to distinguish your cell nucleus for that you need option d dye is non fluorescent in water but has high fluorescence when bound to dna dna is present in the cell nucleus so naturally you will be able to distinguish your cell nucleus so d is the answer now statement s or oh, next question often cancer cell decouple glycolysis from tca cycle reason warburg effect is beneficial to cancer cells which of the following option is correct both s and r are correct and r is the right explanation for s answer is option a then next one select the option that represent the correct match between set 1 and set 2 given below secondary messenger it is ip3 a5 there are so many a5 okay d alone we can eliminate a5 okay then primary effector now primary effector will be b3 i think phospholipase c okay b3 is present in b and c a can be eliminated transducer transducer is gq protein okay so b is your answer transducer is gq protein secondary effector is protein kinase c answer is option b then hemoglobin has maximum affinity for it has maximum affinity for carbon monoxide answer is option c so thank you for watching my channel please do like share and subscribe i have uploaded previous year biochemistry as well as biotechnology phd entrance exam question papers for hyderabad university you can refer my channel for the same thank you